The message today is entitled, The Song That Never Ends. I'm reading from two different places in the book of Revelation. The first is found in chapter 14, verses 3 and 4. And they sang a new song before the throne and before the four living creatures and the elders. No one could learn the song except the 144,000 who had been redeemed from the earth. And the second scripture is found in chapter 15, verses 3 and 4. And sang the song of Moses, the servant of God, and the song of the Lamb. Great and marvelous are your deeds, Lord God Almighty. Just and true are your ways, King of the ages. Who will not fear you, O Lord, and bring glory to your name? For you alone are worthy, are holy. All nations will come and worship before you, for your righteous acts have been revealed. Have you ever heard a song that is so wonderful that you want to hear it over and over again? That you find yourself singing it, even when you're not thinking about it? Even when you're working, that this melody just comes to your mind? A song that moves you deeply? A song that brings tears to your eyes? Or maybe a smile to your face? I've heard some great choirs in my lifetime. I've attended meetings where there were thousands of people, where these thousands of people lifted their voices in praise to God. It's really wonderful to hear about 65,000 people singing the song, How Great Thou Art. One of my favorite places is a camp in Oklahoma in the United States. There during the summer, for several weeks, youth camps are held, and as many as five, 6,000 young people gather each week and sing the praises of God. It's just wonderful as the praises of God just seem to swell and just lift you up. The music has been described as heavenly. Yet the greatest music we have heard will not compare to the song that never ends. This song is called a new song. It is the song of the Lamb. First, the song that never ends is a love song. Some of our greatest music is based on love. The song that I'm talking about is a song for the Lord. Some songs that we hear are meant to entertain us. They are for our benefit, or they may be written to teach something. What we see in the book of Revelation can only be described as a song of love. It is as if no one else is present. The believers are referred to here as the redeemed. They follow the Lamb wherever he goes. The Song of Solomon in the Old Testament is a song of love. There's a saying which says, Love is blind. Peter Kreeft says that this is not true. He points out that love is not looking at yourself, but at the beloved. Why does God love us? It is certainly not because we've earned his love. Why does God's love reach into a prison and change a murderer? Why does God's love reach to a persecutor named Saul and change his life? The Bible does not explain it. It just says that God is love, that God first loved us. If we want to know love, then we must look to God. You will find beauty in God beauty beyond all the beauty in creation. And there's some beautiful things in creation. Think of the majestic mountains. Think of the beautiful roses. Put all that beauty into one. Yet, it is as nothing compared with the beautiful person that I'm speaking of, the Lord himself. God is the most beautiful person you can ever know. You will find grace in God. It is not just that he gives grace when we first come. It is grace all the way. John Newton lived a wicked life on a slave ship until the grace of God transformed him. Later he wrote the song, Amazing Grace, How Sweet the Sound, That Saved a Wretch Like Me. Do you want to have joy to sing all the time? 
You can when you know that God loves you. He loves you not because you're good, not because you deserve it. He simply loves you. And he proved this when he gave his son for you. In 1 John 4, 9, we read these words. In this was manifested the love of God toward us, because that God sent his only begotten son into the world, that we might live through him. Someone who loves you will stand by you even when others forsake you. They will see you in a different light to those who criticize you. Why did that father go out to welcome his wayward son that we read about in the Gospels? We refer to him as the prodigal son. There's only one explanation. It is love. Yes, the song that never ends is a song of love. It is a song of love to one who is love, to one who is pure love, one whose love is far beyond our imagining. We can never know fully the depths or the heights or the widths or the lengths of that love. But God so loved us that he gave his son for us. This is the song that we sing, a song of love, and we sing it to the Lord. What wonderful love he has shown to us. The song that never ends is a unique song. Maybe in your country you have some special types of singing. Sometimes there will be maybe a type of folk, folk song which is unique to a particular country. And not everyone can sing that song. Maybe there are other music that is peculiar to the area where you live and even other people in your country cannot sing that particular type of song because they've not learned it they don't understand it sometimes you hear a person sing and you know that their voice is good you know that they're singing properly and yet you have the feeling that there's something lacking in the song you see there's a difference in performing and singing from the heart. Sometimes professional singers sing a song like Handel's famous Messiah and it may be good music from a technical point of view but there's often something lacking. What is it? They do not know the one they're singing about. There's a vast difference between one who sings to his lover than there is to one who simply sings for performance. Only the redeemed of the Lord can sing this song that never ends. In chapter 14 and verse 3 we find these words, And no man could learn that song but the hundred and forty-four and forty-four thousand, one hundred and forty and four thousand which were redeemed from the earth. The language of numbers is important in this book. Twelve is often used. There are twelve gates to the city. The wall of the city is measured as 144 cubits. In the Old Testament there were twelve tribes. In the New Testament there are twelve disciples. Twelve is the number of wholeness. And the number 144,000 is simply 12,000 multiplied by 12 which is expressing completeness wholeness there is one group that teaches that only this number can go to heaven but that is false that is untrue those who say that do not understand the teaching of God's Word this is simply saying that all the redeemed can sing this song and them alone. In some schools professors teach about the Bible. It is just another book to them. They may teach it in social studies. They may understand some of its teachings, some of the ethical teachings. But what they do is like trying to read in the dark. They do not know the one that the book talks about. There's a difference in a Sunday school teacher who loves God and loves his word and teaches his word than 
a professor in a college who does not know the one of whom he speaks who teaches the Bible but it is simply head knowledge without the knowledge of the heart I remember one Sunday school teacher who loved Jesus so much one of her legs was crippled but she was still very active and she loved to talk about Jesus what is unique about this song the song is directed to the giver of the song and with most songs that is not true we often do not know much about the person who wrote the song and often the purpose of the song is not even that we may know anything about the writer of the song but that's not true with the song that never ends the purpose of the song that never ends is that it may be directed to the giver of the song you will not be around Christians very long until they begin to sing and they will sing about their Redeemer they will sing about the one who loves them and their song will never end go to almost any Christian meeting and you will find Christians singing we sing to the Lord we praise him we rejoice in him the song that never ends is a worship song if you turn through this book you will find several hymns of praise some of them are to be found for instance in chapter 4 and again in chapter 7 if you'll turn to Revelation chapter 4 you'll notice wonderful song there where it expresses things such as this it says that each of the four living creatures had six wings and was covered with eyes all around even under his wings day and night they never stopped saying holy 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 is the Lord God Almighty who was and is and is to come and there they fall down before him who sits on the throne and they worship him who lives forever and ever and they lay their crowns before the throne and they say you are worthy our Lord and God to receive glory and honor and power for you created all things and by your will they were created and have their being or if you turn to chapter 7 again you will find a picture of worship people praising God through their words turn to chapter 7 and just notice briefly it speaks there of a great multitude that no one could count and it says that they cried out in a loud voice salvation belongs to our God who sits on the throne and to the Lamb all the angels were standing around the throne and around the elders and the four living creatures they fell down on their faces before the throne and worshiped God saying amen praise and glory and wisdom and thanks and honor and power and strength be to our God forever and ever yes it is a picture of worship of praise to him who alone is worthy to receive it the Lord himself we can worship the Lord in different ways we can worship him in silence we can worship him with words and one of the best ways to worship is through song when people want to express their deepest feelings to God they often begin to sing what happens when we worship there is a recognition of the greatness of God we confess his greatness great and marvelous are your works Lord God Almighty some people believe in a very small God they think of a God that they can control someone like themselves some people believe that God is just a policeman always looking to catch them or some people think of God like a Santa Claus someone who's always there to give something to them but the Bible tells us about a God who is the creator who created all things 
and all things depend upon him for their existence. God is full of love and compassion. He is trustworthy. Did you notice those words, just and true are your ways? When we worship, there is awe. Many times the Bible talks about the fear of the Lord. What does that mean? It means a sense of awe. Sometimes we're so amazed that we cannot maybe even say anything. F.W. Faber, Faber calls fear astonished reverence. It is like standing before a great mountain in Switzerland. We may be speechless and surprised before the beauty of the mountain. Notice the word holy. This is a difficult word for us to understand. But it tells us that God transcends us. He is greater than us. He is greater than anything earthly. God is worthy of all worship. It says, For all the nations shall come and worship before you. He is worthy as the Creator, and He is worthy as the Redeemer. When we worship, we should come away knowing that we have been in the presence of the Lord, knowing that we have been with the one who loves us more than any other. We should leave saying, Isn't God wonderful? Isn't God beautiful? Isn't God great? We should come away with a sense of amazement and wonder when we worship. Most songs have an end, sometimes an unhappy end. Many songs are soon forgotten. Maybe they last for a few months, they're played on the radio for a while, and then you never hear them again. The song of the Lamb is different. It never ends. It is the only new song there is. The more we sing it, the more we will want to sing it. The more we sing it, the more wonderful it will seem to us. The song that never ends is a love song. It is a song for the Lord, response to His love. It is a unique song. It is a song that comes through our personal experience and it is a song that goes to one who alone is worthy to receive praise and honor and glory and it is a worship song as we sing this song we are praising the Lord we recognize his greatness I ask you today do you have a song are you singing in your heart are you just singing the songs of this world? Songs that are soon forgotten? Songs that have no real meaning to them? Do you know the song of the Lord, the song of the Lamb? There's much noise and confusion in this world. And many people are not singing because they have nothing for which to sing. Instead of a song, there's a sadness in the lives of many people a sadness that comes because they're living only for themselves a sadness that comes because they do not know the real song the Lord himself the song giver and the song are the same we sing about the long the lamb and we sing to the lamb if you do not have a song I invite you today to come to the Lord Jesus Christ and he will give you a song to sing. Come to him. Receive him into your heart now. Recognize your need of him. Ask him to come into your life and to forgive you, to save you. And he'll give you a song. A song of joy. And it will be a song that will never end. From now on, you will want to sing this song and you will continue to sing this song because it is a song of love and it is a song of worship. So many people settle for so much less than they should. They're just content with the crumbs of this world. They're content with a little bit of noise that the devil can give them. My friend, come to the Lord. 
Let his music fill your heart. Let his joy come into your soul and begin to sing the song of redemption, the song of the Lamb. The Lamb is the Lord Jesus Christ. Behold the Lamb of God which takes away the sin of the world. That is why Jesus came. That is what Easter is about. That is what Christmas is about. That is the reason the Christian has a song every day of the year. We can sing even in the bad times. We can sing in the good times too. We can sing in the sad times. And we can sing in the happy times too. Because we have a song that will never end. What you need to do today, my friend, if you're not a Christian, is come to the song giver. Come to the Lord Jesus Christ and let him put the song of joy in your heart today. And you will begin to sing. You will begin to sing a new song. For Jesus Christ will make your life new. And you will begin to sing unto the Lord. You will begin to praise him and to rejoice in his love. Just think of it. What difference does it make if someone does not love you in this life if the Lord loves you because in his love you have an eternal love a love that will never let you go a love that will be with you in your dying moment and a love that will be with you throughout the endless ages of eternity this is the song that never ends begin to sing my friend in the Lord let us pray Dear Lord, we praise you that you are the living God, that you alone are God. You alone are worthy of our praise, of our worship. You alone are worthy of all glory and wisdom and power forevermore. And just as we find in the last book of the Bible where they cast their crowns before you in worship, in humble adoration, Lord, we come today to worship you and praise you for who you are, for what you have done, that you are the mighty creator and you are the mighty redeemer. Lord, if there are people who are listening to this message today who do not have a song of salvation in their heart, we pray today they may begin to sing the song of the Lord, the song of the Lamb. Lord, we pray that in the confusion and the noise of this world, Many people today will begin to sing the song of redemption, a song unto the Lord. We praise you and thank you. To you be the glory now and evermore. In Jesus' name, amen.